I don't have a job. I didn't have the privilege to go to school. I am a man of God. Is it true that God can lift me? Can ministry work for me? Listen carefully. God's integrity and God's ability. Carry this as a revelation tonight. I believe him. But more than believing him, I listen, listen, please look up. If you believe in the one who is just above the clouds, you will not get anything. There are exact things you have to believe about God. You are too faithful to lie. Do you know when the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie? Do you know what that means? If God calls this a chair this has to become a chair when the Bible says God cannot lie it's more than God does not lie he's not tempted with lying his creative power insists that he's always right so if God looks at you and says you are a millionaire listen <laughs> The implication of that statement is that his power will never rest until it forces you to look like what he says. Are we together? Blessed is she that believes. Unto her. Not unto them. Unto the individual who believes. There shall be a performance of those things which were spoken to her by the one who has integrity and the one who has ability. I'll share with you one testimony and then we'll begin to pray. 2009, 2010, please sit. Thank you. At that time, most ministries largely you know generated the income that would run the ministry among other things largely from media ministry sales of cds you know and all of that and then the lord gave me a revelation and he spoke to me he said now that's just a personal word there he said for you i'm not going to allow you sell anything but what will happen is that you put your teaching let it be put for you on the internet and my angel will go with it to the ends of the earth it didn't make sense till today i'm not on social media sit down please are we together now now listen carefully i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but i'm saying that simple act of supposed foolishness the one who has integrity and has ability spoke it was up to me to sit down and say god don't make a fool of me i fasted and prayed but that one instruction in obedience the angel of his presence took those teachings from nation to nation from region to region and the rest to god be the glory i remember the first time I stood before a dead body the person had died and they were looking for me to come and raise the body back to life it was it was an anatomy department and then the mortuary attached to it I entered inside and there were several dead bodies I was wondering which one am I going to raise and when I stood before the dead body I was to raise it was looking like a stone I laid hands and I said in the name of Jesus Christ I call forth life to you come back absolutely nothing happened I prayed again in the name of Jesus the second time nothing happened I prayed the third time nothing happened and I said listen I've, I've done my best I've given my my best I just used the time to start reflecting on my own life at least so that I don't waste that time there no movement no nothing and yet i believed 
that in my lifetime and in ministry many dead bodies will come back look at me if you are waiting for it to work in your life first to believe God it will never work way before the evidence manifests in your life your faith has to be on the integrity and the ability of God are we together I do not have anything in my pocket but I believe he said I am blessed and so I believe I am blessed let the redeemed of the Lord say so now very quickly let me tie up a very powerful principle many people agree with God but they do not know how to manifest Bible faith can I quickly run through a few keys that will spell that faith equation for you number one Bible faith starts with revelation revelation of God's promises you have to understand what God has said what are his commitments to you this is one of the assignments of scripture to help you know what God has said about you are we together you may have heard me teach that scripture defines the boundary and the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the saints that means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provision that scripture allows he is almighty he is great but he is bound by his word and has chosen to exalt that word even above his name that means if you cannot find his promises there is no basis even if you hear a vision or see a vision or hear a word until you find a scriptural parallel to it there is no basis for God's commitment now this is where a lot of believers get into trouble they say I heard God and they begin to move with all kinds of blind visions without scriptural confirmations the Word of God and scripture is the ultimate that confirms every other experience no matter how visionary it is so if you tell me I'm going to excel in ministry and I ask you why you say because I had an angelic encounter you may be right but I know you are going to suffer as if it's not God that revealed himself to you because until you find where it is written Jesus the word did not come to Satan and say remember I am the word he said it is written. it is written is greater than I saw it is written is greater than I heard it is great, written is greater than they told me. Scripture is a foundation for Bible faith. If he has said it, then he will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop to If he has said it, what has he said concerning you there are many things he has said concerning you Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all these things that I command you that the Lord himself will set you high above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you the integrity of God has spoken when men say there is a casting down it says for you there will be that there is a lifting up the word of God please sit down let me remind you of many things that he said concerning you he said your path is as a shining light that shines even brighter and brighter unto the perfect day do you believe that it is written in your Bible that though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death that you would not fear evil why because he's with you his rod and staff he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table for me even in the presence of my enemies anointing my head with oil and my cup runneth over that is what he has said do you believe that Genesis chapter 17 from verse 6 and 7 it says and I will make you exceeding fruitful is that true yes and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee so as a man of God I do not expect to lead ordinary people there is a covenant of influence that is upon my life based on scripture 
no biases no prejudices is someone listening now listen i want you to come back to scripture and thank god for all the visions thank god for the prophetic but if you are depending on these elements outside of what is written i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you will never truly be able to walk bible faith the prophetic is only valuable to the degree to which it lines up with what is written visionary experiences are only valuable to the degree to which they line up with what is written if i call you out by word of knowledge or by prophecy and i speak to you except if i stamp my experiences with that which is written there is no guarantee that it will come to pass forever O oh lord he says thy word is settled even for visions we see in part and we prophesy in part is someone learning now Takoradi, let me tell you this if you want to see the hand of god upon your life in unusual dimensions i want you to return back to the place of a healthy appreciation of this that is written any extra biblical practice that makes you ignore the word of god is only delving you into superstition let me repeat myself any extra biblical practice no matter how spiritual if it does not find its basis in scripture and if it does not work consistent with that which is written will only waste your christian experience someone shout it is written one more time say it is written it is written concerning me that i will be the head and not the tail it is written concerning me that i will be above and not beneath is it in your bible it is written concerning me that i arise and shine for my light is come it is written concerning me that the glory of the lord has risen concerning me it says gentiles will come to my light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of my rising that for my shame i will receive double where men have deserted me and would not pass through me that i become an eternal excellency and even a joy of many generations it is written concerning me that i and the children that the lord had given to me we are for signs and for wonders in israel it is written concerning me that food alone does not sponsor the quality of life that I'm looking for. That I live by bread and by the word. So I will be foolish to eat bread alone. Knowing that the Bible has told me. Listen. For someone, this is your sermon tonight. Get back to the Bible. Get back to the Bible. More than we men of God, get back to scripture. Hear me. We are only as powerful as the scripture we stand on. We are not powerful. The Bible says our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we, to, are we together? Hmm. That sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament or covenant. Not after the letter but the spirit. For the letter killeth. It is the spirit that gives life. I believe. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all, not some, all that is written therein. Then it says, thou shalt make your way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. I believe it. The Bible tells me that he spake a parable, Luke 18 and verse 1, to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Seeing that I am a man, I must pray. Prayer now does not just become a spiritual routine. It is a matter of life and death to me. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says to pray without ceasing. Is that true? James 5 and verse 13 gives me the biblical recommendation for affliction. Is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. So every time I see an affliction around my vicinity, whether I understand it or not, the biblical recommendation is to pray. And he says, Elijah was a man of like passion as we are, but he prayed earnestly. So prayer can open and unlock the heavens. The Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. So if I withhold, I should not be surprised when I am poor. The Bible says a diligent hand shall be made fat. Is that true? And that he that waters shall be himself watered. Let's return back to scripture. If you surround your life with anything aside from scripture, you cannot manifest Bible faith. The Bible tells me in Philippians chapter 4 
and verse 6 it says to be anxious for nothing so I know immediately that anxiety is not of God be anxious for nothing he says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he says to let my request be made known and then he says the God of peace shall garrison protect my heart and then verse 8 he says finally brethren whatsoever things are true pure noble honest whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things so i know that my mindset has a lot to do with my destiny i will not train my spirit and ignore my mindset jeremiah chapter one please sit down i hope i'm not wasting your time jeremiah chapter one he came to him and said right from when you were in your mother's womb before thou camest forth out of the womb i called you and ordained you is that true to be a prophet to the nations and jeremiah cried and said ah for i am a child and he said say not that i'm a child but wherever i send you to thou shalt go and to whoever i send you say whatever i ask you to say and then then he says what seest thou that means now that I've given you a prophetic word, I need to work on your perception. What do you see from what I have said? The performance is not based on what I have said. The performance is your perception of what I have said. He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then he says, you have seen correctly. Verse 12, 1 verse 12 of Jeremiah says, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Amplified says, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Faith is not an issue of bold face. It is the richness of the word that dwells within you. Is that true? I understand that territorial revival does not just depend on God and the spirit of revival but also willing men who can pray that I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I may not destroy it so I don't sit down and fold my arms and say God come uh -uh. it is the spirit and the bride together that tells the world to come that means if the spirit alone is saying Takoradi be revived Takoradi will not be revived the bride who is the vessel must also agree with the spirit if the spirit says be healed the bride must say be healed for healing to come if the spirit says be lifted the bride must say be lifted john said i am the voice i am not the word but i'm the one who gives echo the voice hear me please brothers and sisters let us return back men of god more than just sitting to listen to messages of one another and preaching which is profitable let us go back and open this scripture with childlike faith and begin a genuine spiritual adventure so we do not make a mess of ourselves and our territories i found your word and i did eat it he says and it was a joy and a rejoicing to me hallelujah lack of the balance and the structure of scripture in the life of a believer is what delves us into all kinds of error and imbalance the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and even the doctrine of demons but it says that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise to salvation Acts chapter 20, I believe is verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance, even among them that are sanctified. Psalms 82 from verse 5 to 7. They know not, he says, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are God and all of you. How many? All of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall fall like men, men and you shall die like men, men and fall like one of the princes. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So my confession determines when I find what God has said I will say it I am blessed I am healed 
in the name of Jesus Bible faith starts with your respect and your honor to scripture let me let me tell you this any aspect of your life that is not yet working I give you an assignment tonight go on a faith scripture adventure find relevant scriptures that talk about you are not the first to go through what you are going through the Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is you are not the first to want growth you are not the first to want increase you are not the first to suffer barrenness man of God you are not the first to look for a land for a church building the things that are written for time Apostle, you don't know what is happening in Ghana and Africa. The economy seems to be shaking up and down. You are not the first. An idol worshiper in awe of the Chaldeans called Abraham was called out from that background of idolatry and was made a global representation of the blessing of the Lord. Isaiah 51 from verse 2. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bare thee. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Understudy his life. It says if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham not the talks of Abraham be restored to scripture man of God without the Bible we are only wasting the time of God's people more than stories more than examples more than prophecies and miracles let them come under the Word of God the degree to which we exalt and promote the integrity of scripture is the degree to which we can predictably be a blessing to people. Is that true? For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. If I ask you now to lift your Bible, let me pray on it. You may not really enjoy what I'm saying. You say, what is that? But if I say lift your document. Now, I'm not being sarcastic or lift something. Very quickly, you will lift it and drop that Bible there. Does it look to you like the story that was in 2 Kings chapter 4? There was a woman who left her greatest blessing in the room and was crying she was in debt and what could save her was right there and when she was complaining to the prophet the oil was hearing i'm sure if the, if the oil had the opportunity to speak you say don't disrespect me i am not small it is the limitation of your understanding the same way your bible keeps looking at you in the room while you are going through all kinds of things and satan continues to hope that it will remain closed can I tell you, the Bible says, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls there. And then the elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the root of David has prevailed that he is worthy to open the book. Weeping always continues until the book is opened. For as long as you do not have the courage and the determination to open the book. Hallelujah. Every time God is sending me to Egypt, I have a right to ask him, who will stand, who will I tell Pharaoh has sent me? And God never sends people alone based on scripture. He will always send you with a rod. A rod determines what happens to the Red Sea, not just God. So because I have that understanding, when God sends me as a man of God, I don't just get up and start running. What is the rod you have put in my hand? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Inside and outside shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to return back to that which is written. Say in the name of Jesus. More than miracles. More than prophecies. More than signs and wonders. I declare restoration of my passion for scripture. John chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so scripture starts with faith Bible faith starts with the revelation of scripture you have that point down the next point is meditation this is something most believers do not understand meditation 
Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Meditate therein. Meditate therein. Meditate therein. To meditate means to ponder deeply onto the spirit of that story, the spirit of that parable, the spirit of the letter enters you. The purpose of, med of meditation is for you to access the spirit component because in James chapter 2 and verse 26, James was speaking and he said, For us, faith with this, a body without a spirit is dead. That means if you are just reading the letter, you are just reading something that was printed by Zondervan or White Taker House, it will not do you much. It is meditation that draws out the spirit behind the story. Otherwise, you would just read a parable, read something. Do you know if you read the Bible just intellectually alone, you will end up finding a book that has a lot of confusing statements, conflicting statements, and at the end, you will just drop it. Meditation is where you allow the breath of the Spirit to rest upon you. Someone say meditation. I'm showing you the formula that translates to genuine Bible faith before we pray. Meditation is very powerful. In Psalms 119 verse 97. Psalms 119 verse 97. Psalms 109 from verse 97. It says, Oh how I love thy law. It is my meditation. How long? Do you know? You can read a scripture and because you are meditating on it so much, you can be taking a shower when the light comes. And God just brings that rhema word even through the things you have studied. Meditation is powerful. Even non-believers understand this. Is that true? People have tapped into superhuman abilities through the art of meditation. To meditate means to ponder deeply and to contemplate until the spirit of that truth is released into you. Number three, the third faith equation is prayer. Hmm. Most people do not know that prayer is part of the dynamics of producing Bible faith. Mark chapter 11 and verse 24. Jesus rebuked a tree and it withered and the disciples came wondering, wow, you did this and it happened. And Jesus made a very interesting statement in 11 and 24 of Mark. He says, therefore I say unto you, are we still together? What things soever ye desire. Now you can fill in the blank. What things soever ye desire. He says, when ye pray. Is that in your Bible? Believe that thou receivest it and thou shalt have it. That means if prayer is not captured in your faith equation, you are not working with Bible faith. Prayer prayer Isaiah 41 and verse 21 very powerful and popular scripture 41 21 Isaiah it says produce your cause saith the Lord bring forth your strong reasons don't assume I know what you need when he met the man blind Bartimeo on his way to Jericho he said what would I do for you that sounded like a sarcastic statement you see a blind man who is calling upon you and you are asking him what he wants God gave man a will and it is unscriptural, unscriptural for God to usurp the will of man. So he says that um, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says let your request be made known. Don't assume he knows it. Prayer. Prayer is very, very powerful. The next is call your confession of faith very simple but powerful faith dynamic there is a place of speaking in manifesting bible faith two scriptures psalms 107 and verse 2 psalms 107 and verse 2 psalms 107 it says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord let the lifted in Takoradi say so. Let the anointed of the Lord, let the prosperous of the Lord, more than think so, you must say so. Comes from the word homologio. That means repeat as you have heard. 
I prophesied as I was commanded. I was already commanded. But did you notice in Ezekiel 37 that the bones did not move at the confession of the spirit. It was when the human vessel spoke that there was a sound. He already told him what to say. But the bones did not do anything. But when he prophesied as he was commanded. So when God says you are blessed, nothing happens until you agree with him and say it's true. I am blessed lifted above situations and circumstances someone while you are sitting declare in one minute i am blessed everything you know declare it upon yourself by the power of the holy spirit i decree and declare that my path is as a shining light i shine brighter and brighter in the name of jesus christ ministry is flourishing the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, that they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Even in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. Let me give just two left for sake of time. The next point is very important. That is what really seals the faith equation is called your action of obedience. Notice the progression I'm giving you. Revelation of scripture, then meditation, then prayer. Are we together? Then confession of that which is spoken. And then action of obedience. This is powerful. Write for reference, Luke chapter 17 from 11 to 14. I may not read it, but just write for reference. Luke 17, 11 to 14. This was the story of the 10 lepers. Remember the Bible says Jesus was passing, is that true? And he saw 10 lepers. And then when he saw the lepers, they beckoned on him to help and heal them. And he told them to stand up and go and show themselves to the priest. How many of you know that was a risk, especially in ancient time? as they went they noticed that they were cleansed of their leprosy is that true action of obedience he told them stand up and go in john chapter 2 the wedding in cana the first 11 verses when you read the bible says there was a wedding in cana and the wine finished when the wine finished an embarrassment was imminent and then a few people spotted jesus in the crowd and they came and met the mother to lobby for them finally they got to see him and jesus said what would you have me do for you and they said look wine is finished and he said fill six pots with water and when they did he said you fetch it and start going do you know that it's like coming to serve your man of god that you so love and honor and then carrying kerosene and believing it will turn to water say for instance you will not only be disciplined, you may go to jail. Is that true? Now he told them, fetch the water. Imagine them going shaking but obeying. Ah. And then water he turned into wine. He opened the eyes of the blind. There's no one. turn water to wine he can turn poverty to prosperity it's the same miracle if he turn water to wine he can turn an f student to an a student if he turn water to wine he can turn an irresponsible man to become such an admirable father please sit down to turn a thing according to chemistry is to alter the chemical configuration so that it becomes something else sometimes irreversible mm. that means god can look deep through a man and find out what do i need to change to make saul become paul the word of god is that quick and powerful it's able to penetrate even to the someone listening so if I come and I'm limping and I cannot walk well if God turned the water to wine are we together yes there are many people who have turned things to several things you have turned cocoa in Ghana to many things is that true and if we have the privilege of going to the factory we are going to see chemists 
and all kinds of people they know what to add sometimes they subject it under pressure sometimes they add a lot of other reagents to react something changes so don't be surprised if the version of you that came is not the version that leaves don't be surprised if the unanointed you that came is no longer the one who goes if they ask you and say how did it happen sing this song for them that our god is able to turn water to wine poverty to prosperity shame even to glory like pastor nat said you need to look at our lives too look at my own life if you do not believe god can change people or if you've thrown your Bible, let me be the continuation of the scripture you were reading. That God is able to lift a man. He is the lifter of men. I will hold on to your word. And I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal that you are the lifter of men the lifter of men i will hold on to the storms and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men He's a lifter of men, lifter of men. You're the lifter of men, lifter of men. You're the lifter of men. Please hold on through the storm. That's my word for you. Will you hold on to his word? For your story about to change by the lifter of men I'm not singing I'm prophesying to you please hold on to the storm I know you have cried and cried just hold on to his word your life will soon reveal he's a lifter of men lifter of men that by this time next year by the time you come for this conference someone will stand here and say I was outside 2022 I was outside look what the lifter of men has done to my ministry look what the lifter of look what the lifter of men has done to my family he took me from Ghana and shot me like an arrow to the ends of the earth Let me sing it one more time, even if this is where we close. Don't sing, just listen. The Lord is speaking to you. Will you hold on through the storms? Will you hold on to my word? Barren, but hold his word. Nobody is placing a demand on your grace, man of God, but hold his word. Don't go around faking things and say ministry must work. Uh -uh. I will hold on to your word. Yes, I will hold on to your word. My story is about to change by the lifter of men. Lifter of men. One more time. I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men. Lifter of men. Please listen to me. We're wrapping up. Hear me. Every giant of faith you see had to find out Lord what would you demand me to do obedience is useless until there is first an instruction are we together 
come my friend if this gentleman is just roaming just walk around the difference between madness and coming to me is that I ask him to come if he just keeps coming to me and going back coming to me and going back if I did not ask him to come I will send him to your medical team because this is madness but if I say come now it is obedience just taking action is not obedience you must take action in the direction of what is demanded is someone following now many of you have been taking action you can take action in the wrong direction while we're coming yesterday bishop was just showing me some of the routes that connect to takoradi coming here and i said wow amazing how the roads you know showed me the beautiful hospital your regional hospital and he was showing me these things because you can fire on four, all four cylinders in the wrong direction it is action but in disobedience so for instance for someone here if god tells you that the key to a rich spiritual life is to get back to the ministry of prayer if you keep saying i'm going i'm going and you don't do it you have not taken action but if after this conference you go back and dust your prayer closet and say lord i'm here with you again now this is an action of obedience you begin to pray one week becoming one month one month becoming a quarter of a year and then one night you will encounter his majesty and he will deposit something upon your life that the entire globe will come to terms with it is true pastor nat sang a beautiful song one of his songs says i am waiting such a powerful song to wait upon the lord means to wait it doesn't just mean to fast it means to sit down and wait it was waiting that qualified mary to be the first evangelist who saw the resurrected christ all the disciples came and they were in a hurry they went and they did not see but a woman stayed and said i'm not going she kept looking and as she kept looking she saw a man and she said rabboni there is power in waiting when you wait you will see things that those who are in a hurry do not see for someone this may be a message for you you are too in a hurry god gives speed but he does not rush people you are in a rush to announce yourself i am a prophet you are in a rush i am an apostle you are in a rush i must build the church for someone you came for this meeting tonight for this one word wait the secret to speed in the kingdom is in that one word wait we run in this kingdom when we wait the key to speed i repeat is waiting jesus waited when the disciples went six hours ahead of him and when he got up from that waiting he started walking on water and caught up with them for someone if you can wait from now to the next two months you will run faster than you've run 10 years but if you keep going around with invitation cards please invite me do this do this you may end up embarrassing yourself let's stop here there are two more but I want to pray for you. Maybe I should just point the two more. The next is Thanksgiving. The second to the last faith equation is Thanksgiving. Be anxious for not in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. But in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving. Please sit. Thanksgiving. 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 Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is an act of faith. You tell him thank you even in advance i give you thanks i give you thanks colossians chapter 3 and verse 5 it ends up that state 3 and verse 15 colossians 3 15 it says and be ye thankful the last sentence and be ye thankful that the peace of god garrison your heart to the which ye are called in one body and be ye thankful someone say thank you jesus one more time say thank you jesus this is the biblical cure for complaining 
biblical cure for not seeing the faithfulness of God thank you Jesus thank you thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit tell your work on earth is done you get up in the morning and say thank you Jesus and the devil will say for what from January till now all that as you have court cases you are not able to get a job your wife cannot even take in and you say thank you Jesus ah. thank you Jesus thank you Jesus someone say it and then the last that I will give you tonight is patience the final key that connects you Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 36 the Bible says ye have need of patience is a need patience is a need for ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise so after you have done the will of God there are times you have done all these and it still does not look like it is coming the Bible tells you after you have done the will of God practice patience patience what are you doing Lord I'm waiting upon you as a child looks up to his mother and father I am still waiting but it is two years I thought you said God told you that you are going to be such a great man of God I have done everything and continue to do what it makes for greatness can I tell you there is something in every man's life called the season of appearing the Bible says John remained in the wilderness there are times that all is in place it is just not yet your season do you believe what I'm telling you it is not your season and you will find out that you've done everything question what was left that Jesus did not do? Was it study of the word? Was it prayer? But he needed to get to age 30. Are we together? And when he got there, something miraculous happened to him. And he just turned his life, turned around. And they began to announce his good deeds everywhere. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this is... A night that I pray you do not forget more than the manifestation I want you to remember the things we spoke about the integrity of God and his ability and for someone here as we pray you have done everything you know to do and everything you did was right the last thing you need to do is patience can we pray Please stand on your feet glad we already did the altar call I want you to pray just two prayer points for tonight prayer point number one father grant me the grace to walk by faith and to command fearful dimensions of exploits even in these end times lift your voice and pray grant me the grace to walk by faith someone is prophesying the grace to walk by faith and to command fearful dimensions of exploits you want a performance in your life it has to be at the instance of faith outside pray online pray within the auditorium pray grant me the grace to walk by faith Grant me the grace to walk by faith. Nothing wavering. Believe in God like faithful Abraham did. Knowing that he is able to bring to pass that which is spoken concerning me hallelujah the last prayer point father i receive grace to obey you completely completely
great obedience. Lift your voice and pray. The grace for complete obedience. That which you demand of me and from me, I obtain grace to live by it. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have about five or so minutes from what I see. I want you to lay your hands. You're trusting God for a miracle. Because of time, we may not have the time to take testimonies, but I want to pray for you. In other sessions or even in the church here, you can come and testify. But there are just two things I want to do. And then we are done for tonight. I want to pray and speak over the sick. And then there is a reason why I brought this. Once I pray for the sick, I'm going to plead in one minute for your man of God and his wife. We are going to hold this as a prophetic point of contact and just speak in one minute over Takoradi and over Ghana. We will declare that the two lead gates of this territory be open to the glory and the name of the Lord lay your hands now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare for everyone here who is sick everyone plagued with any kind of infirmity in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I decree and I declare be healed now blood conditions be healed now all kinds of demonic oppressions that are health related I proclaim your liberty now in the name of Jesus Christ I prophesy over your life that in the name of Jesus Christ everything that ails you every illness every weakness in your body you will leave this place completely healed right now those who are inside those who are outside following online I declare your healing right now in Jesus name I pray amen and amen please may I request that we all stretch our hands here man of God can I please request you and your dear wife pastor Nat, please can I plead for one minute just to blow the shofar prophetically over the gates I'm standing in agreement and we're holding this prophetically and we want to pray for Takoradi that this place will remain a place of revival yeah. hallelujah and i'm going to plead with my dear brother pastor nat he's going to blow the trumpet just once the trumpet is a mystery it announced new seasons yeah. hallelujah even the coming of christ it is the trump of the archangel that will announce it are we together as you hear the sound of the trumpet i'd like you to begin to prophesy over takoradi and over ghana we will never lack men and women of God. We will never lack apostles and prophets. In the name of Jesus, falsehood will never eat up the church. We declare that fresh people, generals are rising. Go ahead. Go ahead. Someone is praying. Jesus Maranatha let revival come in the name of Jesus let breakthrough come let prosperity come we declare the opening of the gates in the name of Jesus Christ and from Ghana let the fire of revival spread across Africa spread across Europe spread across the US spread across Asia in the name of Jesus we decree and declare Psalmists arise from Takoradi, apostles and prophets, pastors arise from Takoradi. In the name of Jesus, we stand upon the grace of Bishop and his dear wife, alongside every servant of God here. We decree and declare, mighty men arise, men of prayer arise, Deborahs arise, Esthers arise, Samsons arise, Gideons arise in the name of Jesus Christ.
and in the name of Jesus, hear me. We speak over the spiritual body of Takoradi. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be ye lifted everlasting doors. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, gates of failure, gates of depression, gates of backwardness, gates of sin. In the name of Jesus, the captain of the army of Israel, rides triumphantly into your city and your region. For in the name of Jesus we pray, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we release the blessing of heaven upon you. You have received us in the name of the Lord. And therefore we declare Amen 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 Amen
we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. What a marvelous night. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord. What an awesome night. Wow. Apostle. It's awesome. Please be seated for a moment. The, the anointing here is too much. What do we tell Apostle and Pastor Nathaniel? Say it better. I say, God bless them in Ghanaian language. Say it one more time. Say it the last one. It means God bless you. God bless you. People of God, tonight as I stand here, my heart is very heavy. It's very heavy. You remember on Wednesday what I told you? That based on revelation the Lord gave to me on the 9th of May 1989, there are demonic homes that scatter great destiny in this city that prevent people churches businesses from rising up how many of you remember today the apostle has confirmed it this morning i was taking my shower to come to church i said it this morning those of you who were here i wrote it the lord said to me the revival fire has been ignited again in this city. Hold on, hold on. You were here this morning. Those of you who were here this morning, I said it. It says, the revival fire has been ignited again in this city. Find it into flames for uncommon transformation. This morning, I said it. Apostle has confirmed it. And based on that, he said we should find it into flames by prayer and intercession. And I told you that based on that, 26th of this month, Friday 26th of this month, we are holding an all night of praise. How many of you remember I said it this afternoon? At the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. The apostle has confirmed it. God willing, Friday the 26th, the whole city will meet to pray. The end of this demonic horn has ended. Now we can arise. Churches can arise. Businesses can arise. The youth can arise. Destinies will arise. If you agree with me, shout amen. Why not stretch your hand towards this great servant of God? and just say a word of prayer to them i have always said that if a man like apostle paul should request prayer from the church no one is above prayer begin to pray and ask god that the lord will sustain their ministry that the oil on their head will never be polluted the lord will continue to increase his grace upon their life upon their calling God will confirm the word of his servant. Anywhere they stand to minister, let there be unction to function. Release. Release grace. Pray for their safety and security. As they travel around the world, pray for their safety and security. Pray for their wives and their children, their ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Apostle and Pastor Nathaniel, on behalf of the planning committee and on behalf of the executive council of this church, the entire minister's network within Second Takrade and Western Region, we want to say a very, very big thank you for this honor. The words thank you are very familiar.
but from the bottom of our heart with deep sense of gratitude and appreciation we say a very big thank you thank you pastor nathaniel thank you apostle selman thank you for coming thank you for this great honor and this privilege let's give the lord a big 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 I want to do two things quickly and then we'll release the apostle to go. Amen. I want to beseech the apostle. I want to plead with the apostle that all the church workers who have worked tirelessly because our building is still under construction. We have not finished yet. So we have to work around the clock to make sure that we bring it to an appreciable level for this silver jubilee of the international prophetic gathering there are men and women who have sacrificed their lives sacrificed their time sacrificed their sleep to bring this program to where it is today i think that it will not be good if i don't ask the apostle to release blessing of service upon their life so all the workers please can you make your way out I want to plead with the apostle, all the church workers, all the workers, the ushers, protocol. I want you to release prayer upon you. He that saves shall be saved, and he that waters shall himself be watered. This is a special request I'm asking the apostle to do for us that every time you spend the energy you spend the money you spend the sleepless night the sacrifice you made God will reward you I would like to plead with the apostle to just lift up a word of prayer prophetic prayer over them that every one of us will have a testimony in addition to all the blessings the apostles have pronounced. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in faith with the bishop and we pray for these precious people. Oh God. The Bible says the Lord gave the word, but great was the company of them that published it. Thank you, Father, for their diligence, walking day and night, giving themselves to prayer their finances their energy in the name of Jesus I declare may the Lord bless you for the Bible declares that the worker is worthy of his wages let that which should come to your life by reason of being a faithful worker I stand in agreement with Bishop and we declare that the blessing rests upon you in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible declares that if they obey and serve him they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure I decree and declare prosperity and pleasure will follow you none of you will fall by the wayside we declare the blessing over your families we declare the blessing over the works of your hands your going out is blessed your coming in is blessed no weapon fashioned against you will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you let it fall in judgment in the name of Jesus the Lord will use you an, as an example of what it means to serve Jesus I declare the blessing upon you you are blessed forever blessed you remain blessed in Jesus name we pray amen and amen amen thank you thank you thank you so much we appreciate you I appreciate all of you for the wonderful sacrifice I know that you will never be the same. Whilst they are going, I want you to know that tomorrow morning, IWEB will be meeting as Mommy leaves the International Women Prayer Empowerment Network on the altar of prayer from 6.30 to 7.30. And then 9, we'll be back here for another fire. In the evening, is praise night 
Oh, you are not excited about that. The praise night start at five. It's going to be very terrific. Very, very terrific. If you agree with me, say amen. The last thing I want to beseech the apostle to do for me before he leaves. I told you from day one that this program is not about money. It's about my heart for this city. That God will bring deliverance to this city. Regardless of how much I put into it. My joy is that this city we shall experience uncommon transformation. However, there are men of God. The day the head of this meeting, they stood me. We met at the palms. They were there. They said, Bishop, if you need any help, we are ready. Some of them released their chairs. Some of them supported us financially. I want those people to come out. I want the apostle to speak pastors, some pastors who willingly support us. Please quickly come, let apostle speak over your life. Let apostle release blessing upon you. All those who met me at the palms, please, I want you to know how much you appreciated. These are men of God and women of God who willingly volunteered and supported me. They supported us. Some of them gave us 300 chairs. Some of us gave us finances. I want you to know how much I appreciate. And I want to plead with the apostle to release apostolic grace for greatness upon you and favor to take over your neighbor. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. It says, Every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Here's the verse for you. It says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you are bound in every good work in the name of jesus again i stand in faith with the bishop and we decree and declare let the blessing of increase rest upon you i prophesy genesis chapter 17 from verse 6 in the name of jesus may the lord make you exceeding fruitful i declare that kings will come out of you nations will even come out of you in the mighty name of Jesus, that you'll be exalted above the nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. He says, thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I decree and declare that the Lord increases you in the north, the south, the east, and the west. The Lord will bless your needing trough. The Lord will bless everything that you are involved with. I pray like Paul prayed over the church in Macedonia that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Therefore, we declare that your needs are provided for and that you only continue to go from glory to glory. You are blessed and you remain blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate. Apostle, thank you so much. Let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord. God willing. God willing. Sunday we shall have his eminence my father and your father this meeting will finally close on sunday evening what a powerful prophetic anointing service by the time you are leaving this place you will be too dangerous for any demonic power to consider you as an enemy somebody say amen i want to call on our first lady my dear wife will be married for 29 good years. After a delay of 10 good years in childbearing, the Lord bless us with three children. I want to call her to come and do us the honor to appreciate our guest speakers for their love for us. Please, let's make welcome, my dear wife.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together once again for what God has done since yesterday, since Sunday up to today. It's awesome. God is a faithful God. I mean, we are seeing the manifestation of the power of God and we are seeing the scripture, Matthew 5, 16, being fulfilled in the life of the servant of God. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. We are seeing your good works and we are glorifying our Father which is in heaven, who is and who was and who will be forever. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? Let's thank God for the life of Pastor Nathaniel and Apostle Selma. We say, Lord, we thank you for answered prayer. We prayed that the Lord should have mercy and bring them safely. And by the grace of God, they are here. We said, oh Lord, we thank you. Once again, Apostle and Pastor, we salute you all in Jesus' mighty name. We said, God bless you for coming. On behalf of the Bishop of Zion Praise, the Executive Board, the Fathers of this land, the General Overseers, and all those who are here, we want to say, God bless you. Nyami on shroud because we know out of your busy schedules you took two days to come and bless us. In fact, we are so much blessed. I, I, I'm experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, and I believe all of us are experiencing it. And I believe that our ministries will change. Our ministries will experience uncommon transformation. We are going to advance the kingdom of God. Ah, from this day up to December, we shall see the hand of the Lord upon our ministries. So we say once again, God bless you. We are here to give you a token. We know that we cannot pay you. Hallelujah. We are here. We are here to give you a token. So first of all, I want to invite Pastor Nathaniel to come. Please, we humbly invite you to come. This is, this is what we have for you. And you can see your picture and our small citation. And on behalf of Zion Praise and everybody here, want to say God bless you. It's just a token. Bless you. Please we want to take a picture with you. Please, our papa wants to take a picture with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Apostle Selma, please. <laughs> we once again said thank you so much. Zion Praise and Sekini Takwade. The whole Ghana loves you so much. And our prayer is that we'll see you this year. <laughs> you and Pastor Natalia, we love you so much. So we are just giving you this token. As you go, remember, this year, we are pleased. <laughs> We know as you see this on your table, you remember that Takradi, Western Region, wants you again. So on behalf of the bishop of this house and everybody, we 
Jesus, I will love you so much. Please, we want to take picture with you. I think there's there's one more picture that they should take. One more picture. Isn't it awesome? Apostle and Pastor Natane, Sekendita, the Western region, we love you. That, that, there are, somebody said no. <laughs> somebody said no. He wants to present a special picture. It's, please. Can I have it quickly? This one, this one. There's a young man here. <laughs> he said he wants to present it. Amen. Amen. So the protocol will keep it and uh, when we close. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Because of time, because of time, we have to release Apostle and Pastor Nathaniel. Amen. I want the ushers, the protocol, and the security to clear the way. Please clear the way. Amen. Now, please listen to this instruction. Please, nobody's to move. Please don't move. Please, can you listen? I want to lead the apostle and Pastor Nathaniel who wants to welcome Pastor Prince of Hinasari to take over. Let's welcome him. Celebrate. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Now nobody should leave until you are instructed to leave we all heard the word of the lord and we heard that obedience is part of it so whether you are inside or outside don't move we will leave here very soon and somebody clap your two hands
Hallelujah. Somebody put your two hands together for the Lord of our God. Can I tell somebody something? Never, ever, ever will your life remain the same. How many of you were here in the morning? You were here in the morning. Praise the Lord. Listen, there is something that has happened to you that will remain indelible. Nobody can change it. Nobody can alter it. And listen carefully to me. The skies will be your limit. Praise the Lord. Now, quickly, 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 I want to do this. This morning I said something. I give out envelopes. And sometimes we think that it is only by prayer and fasting. But listen carefully to me. Honestly speaking, prayer and fasting cannot bring you money. Prayer and fasting cannot give you any breakthrough. Financial breakthrough. The only thing that can give you financial breakthrough is to give. Jesus said, fast, pray. The last one, give. These are the three pillars of the church. You fast, you pray, and you give. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it is said, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Listen, I want to give everybody an envelope. And like I said, like I said, you take the envelope and Sunday in the evening, the archbishop himself will be here. You didn't hear me well. And you are bringing it on Sunday in the evening. Not tomorrow, not Sunday morning. It will only be in, on Sunday in the evening. And I will beg the archbishop to sit here. And then you bring it here. And I will beg him like bishop did for him to pray for you and it is nothing but only 72 Ghana cities only 72 Ghana cities <clears throat> sorry so wherever you are i want you to just pick that envelope and i want the ushers and the protocol as many as can help us go around and give the envelope. if you took one in the morning you don't need to take it again right but nobody should leave i have only some few minutes to do this that don't leave because if you leave, it means that you are disobedient. It doesn't matter your status. Listen carefully to me. As I'm standing here, I'm almost 72 years. I can be older than about 60% of the people here. Oh, honestly speaking. Honestly speaking. And I'm still here. So if you leave as a young man, it's an act of disobedience. Amen. You see, all these, these great men, old, old men, they are all seated here. And if a young man, because... Apostle is going, and you are going, it means that you are disrespecting the anointing that is on us. Is somebody hearing me? So don't leave. I'm coming. I'm coming, sir. Huh? He's, he's not going. Bishop is not going. He's here. Amen. All right. So go around and give out the envelopes. Just, I said I want three sheets. Number one, 50 Ghana cities, 20 Ghana cities, and two Ghana cities. Three papers in the envelope. 72 Ghana cities. So lift up your hand and take one. Quickly. Go around. Give it up. Some of you should go outside there. Outside there. Then on top of the Galilee. And, uh, and just on my right side. Just give it out. Now, if, if you took an envelope since Sunday and you have the envelope here, you can just walk up to me here and bring it. I'm not talking about what you did this morning. This morning, I said that the Archbishop will pray for you. But if you have an envelope here, you took an envelope. Those of you came to lie down on the altar yesterday and you have that envelope here just rise up quickly 
and bring it. If you came to lie down on the altar yesterday and you have it here, the Bible said, and Isaac began to prosper. Don't begin to be poor by taking the emblem and not doing what you are supposed to do. Don't be Ananias. Right. Just give it to me, don't worry. I'm taking it. Every envelope, apart from what I gave you this morning, that one you wait. God from beginning to the end. The choir is gone home. From Put the mobile, mobile number on the screen, please. Sing it again. You are God. 